Today's episode of Real Talk Christian Podcast is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With the beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone from adults to teens and even children can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Again, that's csbible.com. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. I'm your host, Chris Fuller. And I'm tired. And this is tired. I'm tired. Mr. Mark Hyde. Hey! And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, what would the ministry of Jesus look like Ooh. in the modern culture? It's going to be a fun conversation. Mark, you ready to do it? I'm ready. You ready? Let's go. Time again. I was trying to throw you off a little bit, and you just rolled <laughs> well, white. Right, you just whoa, white, wait, wait, my friend. See, this last week we talked about learning a language. I, I did not learn a language. Learn I did language. not learn the English one. But either way, we are back, my friend. We are ready, <laughs> dude. We're drinking out of some really cool cups. Can we talk about the cups? Let's talk about the cups. These are so, your cups. I did not well, bring a mug. So, well, why would you come to my house? I've got like a billion of them. Anyways, That's actually. Very true. That these, is not an understatement. These cups came from the Ark Encounter. I love it. I'm, I'm hiding and, my... Oh, people can still see it on YouTube. And so this is what they look like before hot liquid. And then, Mark, you want to show them what it looks like after yes. hot? After. Look at the color. So that's the Ark. And then the little rainbow. And yeah, so you can't see any of that until you put hot. It's funny because really I made cool. the joke because you're like, hey, dude, I got this new one from the Creation Museum. I'm like, dude, awesome. What do they change colors and show the rainbow? And you're like, actually? Yes. yes. Like, the I only, got to see this. The only thing is, is because they're color changing, they're not dishwasher safe and you can't soak them. So I have to hand wash these. Really? But, I didn't realize that you couldn't. Okay. Well, what, I mean, it makes what, sense. When you do that, you like overheat it, I guess. And it like destroys it. So when you guys were at the, the Ark Encounter, did yeah. you guys also do the Creation Museum? Did you do yep. both of them? Oh, yeah. With all three kids. So we did the, we got there on a Thursday night, got into town. Friday, we did the Ark Encounter. Saturday, we did the Creation Museum. Sunday, we did the, uh, what was it called? It's a Newport I think it was Newport, Kentucky, uh, aquarium, and then we drove back on like on an Monday. actual aquarium, yeah, or like yeah, like a real. Oh, okay, okay, real okay. Aquarium, like, so. like nothing with Ken Ham. No, no, <laughs> this is just a real aquarium. Home, that was I don't know why Homeboy doesn't have an aquarium yet. Uh, he's having a Tower of Babel soon. Yes, he is, and he's building on the same grounds as the Ark Encounter, I believe. So that'll be cool. That place is growing like crazy. It, man. That well, that's why they are forty five minutes away from the Creation Museum because. The massive the, the mass land. size of the land or right. whatnot. So but while you guys were there, Beth and I had a trip to Indianapolis. Yeah, we, we saw to- our. Fir- I went to my first. Uh, this is my first concert. Yeah, since COVID, it's actually my first concert since college. So it's probably been about ten years until July twenty second, twenty third. Hey, when we're at a festival, that's well, actually, that's not true because I went to some other concerts that were festivals that I had to help put on when I was, you know, an intern. Um, but no, Beth and I went and saw Ben Rector in Indianapolis. But the cool thing was, okay, Ben Rector put on a stinking show. But I planned nothing for this weekend. I literally just showed up. Like, I got in the car, and Beth put the address into the hotel. So we got to the hotel. And it wasn't, like, it wasn't bougie. Like, we stayed in downtown Indy where we literally could walk to everything. And right. the only reason why we Ubered back was because it was just late. Um, but Beth literally planned out the entire weekend of what restaurants we were going to, what coffee shops we went to, what experiences we had. And, like, I well, I was so impressed because she nailed it. Because I, on the way down to Indianapolis, I made another reference to, like, man, I really want to go to Quills. I want to order some Quills coffee. It's from, it, it's from Kentucky. They, sure. they brew it down in Louisville. Uh, they don't brew it. I'm sorry. They roast it down in Louisville. Well, apparently there's a... Quill's Coffee in Indianapolis, and she found it. And then I made some other joke about, like, man, I, I really want to go to the zoo when we're in India. I, I hope we're going to the zoo. And her old friend who, um, fun fact, she graduated high school with. Sure. I'm in her high school yearbook for Tabernacle Christian, 
in the picture that I'm in her yearbook in is with Andrew. And Andrew was the one who got us free tickets to the zoo because of wherever he works. So the dude that I'm in the picture with from 12 years ago when Beth's yearbook hooked us up with some tickets for the Indianapolis hmm. Zoo. So everything that I said, I hope we get to do this this weekend, we did it. That's cool. And so we went to the Indianapolis Zoo without the kids, and it was glorious. Wow. It was at, we saw the dolphin show. We petted some sharks. We petted a stingray. We went and saw the red pandas. I don't think we I, went and fed giraffes. We saw the elephants. It was a good old time, man, with no kids. I'm, I'm, I'm not a person that would go to the zoo without my kids. I love, but see, here's the deal. The zoo's my happy place. Most people don't, it, it, it used to, I mean, uh, back it up. Mom always took us to zoos. Always, always, always mm. took us to zoos as kids. And I was just like, oh, it's what we do as kids. But then when Elliot became a kid and I had all this free time with him, I literally took him to the zoo once, if not twice per week, every mm. single week during zoo season here in South Bend, because I learned I love to just walk. And if I'm going to walk, I'm not want to walk on a beach. I want to walk with some animals. And I want to hear the I want to hear the animals. Hearing the lion roars is like my favorite thing at Potawatomi Zoo. It is so stinking cool. See, I'd rather see the old like the river walk and walk along the river. That's oh, I did that a lot too. Don't, don't get me wrong. I did that a lot too because I knew all the coffee shops along the way. Well, yeah. But you know, it was just a good time. So while you guys were at the Creation Museum Ark Encounter, Beth and I were chilling with no kids in Indianapolis, going to and doing kid things like the zoo. You guys realize how blessed you are, right? Because not a, are. not everybody can just take weekends away from with no. With, with seven kids, yeah. Well, I got no, three kids, and yeah. I can't do that. No, my my mom is. You realize it, right? My mom is a saint. <laughs> just just remember Mother's Day and birthdays. You better take care of her. <laughs> well, we are, we are, we we definitely are. But no, man, we had we had a great time. We cool. had a great time away. But dude, I just want to say these mugs are stupid cool. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. These I mugs like are stupid cool. Well, dude, so for the fun, get to know Mark and Fuller game. What are we doing tonight? We're gonna do the Would You Rather? Oh, are we doing like again? We, yeah, just like we did last week. Okay. Why not? You know, we haven't done them in a while, so I figured out two weeks. ago. I saw a party cue in the notes, so I'm like, oh, we going to do party? Well, for I was this going episode, to, and I was but... like, I like, I kind of like the Would You Rather. So let's go ahead and dive into a couple of those. Uh, oh. oh. It's an, it's an ad. ad. You know, so I should have clicked on it sooner. The, but I didn't want to see the next question. The amount so. of times we've used this thing, I'm so shocked we just haven't paid for it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It popped up. Pop, top right corner. Oh, top right oh, corner. Oh, top right corner. There it is. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Another ad. Wow. I, I, Don't you love is, ads? Wait, here we go. Wait, wait. Arrows, arrows. No, not the text. Don't or download die. it. Don't download the app. No, no, I don't want that. Text I want or that. Die. Okay, would you rather be oh, okay. a yeah. really fast writer or a really fast reader? Fast reader, because I'm me a, too. I am a very slow reader. I am too. It takes me forever to get through books, but I like to read too. So I enjoy it when I get in. I don't. I, once I'm into the into the book, then I'm then I'm cool. But I'm like, oh, I don't. I have to go read. Like that was that was my mindset. Here's yeah. the real question. When you read a page, yeah. do you ever have to go back and reread it oh, like of two course. or three more times? Because yep. my brain starts thinking of other things and I get I lose track, but my eyes are still following the lines for some reason. Yep. I get to the bottom of the page, I'm like, I don't even remember what the heck I just read. And now you know why we rabbit trail all the time all here on the, the podcast. So what, what 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 did the people say? So 51% said fast writer, 49% huh. said fast reader. So pretty That's close to that. Next, well, we're not going to do this one because I already know what your answer is. All okay. right. <laughs> I, I don't know what your answer is on that. Have too. a family of twelve children, or <laughs> so be famous only inside of your native country, or be famous everywhere but your native country. So in your native country only, or everywhere but your. Native I country. would rather be famous everywhere else but my native country because then I could live a normal life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're famous in your country, you cannot live a normal life. Like think of celebrities, right? They cannot live a normal life. But if you're a nobody where you live. You can literally just go to get some Chinese buffet whenever you want. I'm an introvert, so I don't want anybody. <laughs> I don't want to be famous anywhere. Uh, so I'm going to probably say everywhere but my native I country say for everywhere the same but. reason. Yep. Uh, 55% hey. agreed with us, and 45% said their native I country. I like it. Give me another one. Last one. Would you rather betray oh. your friends or betray your country? Country. I'll betray my yeah. country over my friends. Yeah. I'm a pretty loyal person when it comes to friends. Friends are thicker than country, so I go with friends, too. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I'd rather betray, betray my country, yes. Yeah, I would. I would. I mean. Whoa. So. That's not what I was expecting to see. No. 55% said they'd rather betray their friends. 45% said they'd betray their country. Wow, okay. We need another one. We need another one. All right. Be, <laughs> be eaten by a zombie or be burnt at the stake. Burn me at the Why stake. Why are these even questions? It's better than the last week's of the, would you rather eat humans the rest of your life or starve to death? <laughs> How bored are the creators of the app where it's like, okay, what can we do that is so gross? Zombies you want to be eaten by zombies burn or burn at the stake? Well, like, I'd rather be burned at the stake. Where are you going? Eaten by a zombie? I feel like eat, being eaten by a zombie is going to be a slow, slower death. 
and more painful. I don't want to say either, but I'd rather, I'd rather have it. I'd rather not be eaten by a zombie. So hit the bottom one. All right. So we're going to go with that. 51% said be burned at the stake. Uh, Can we do another billionaire. one. I want to see if there's a happy one. Be, hey, okay, be a billionaire or know the truth about aliens. Give me the money. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Give I me the money. Eighty-one percent said yeah. the money. I had to have so, a conversation yeah. with my eight-year-old to convince her that aliens I don't think are real. Oh, but she's like, but my friend's mom said that they saw this and then they saw they a saw bright this. orb in the sky. Right, and I'm like, guys, you guys know there's satellites. There's, there's planets, satellites. There's, there's planets. There's airplanes. There's uh, uh, what are they called? The little, the little helicopter things. Drones. You, drones. There. Thank you. <laughs> lots of drones. I don't know why it's late and I'm tired. I feel you. Oh, so you're the tired one, not me. This time. This time, right? This time. But yeah, I had to have a whole conversation with, with my eight year old to try to convince her that aliens were not real. You should have been like, they are real and they suck your brains out. <laughs> Man, trying to convince your kids of something that they heard elsewhere, they're like, no. Dad, you're, you're the obviously wrong in the idiot. This <laughs> random person that I don't know who said that they know this. Who smokes cracks at Dude, this. <laughs> like, okay, our 10-year-old, like, she literally, like, one time, like, she asked a question. Beth and I both answered about driving. She goes, well, will my teacher teach me that? And we're like, you're, t- what do you mean will your teacher teach you that? You just don't want us to give you the right answer. And so we're like, come on now. Like, we gave her an answer of, like, no, this is really how it works for driving. It's about driving, about, like, how certain ways work with like right? I think it might have been around. I, I, I don't know. We'll just we'll pretend it's like about right of ways, right? Like oh sure. no, the person to the right has the right of way sure. unless you're obviously beat him. Well, is that what my teacher's going to teach me? Or are they going to teach me something different? We're like, what do you think we're doing? Lying to you? The question is that if, if you all f- at a four way stop, if all four cars pull up at the same time, who has the right of way? The person who goes first. The bravest one. <laughs> <laughs> the person who goes first. I love, but no, kids are wild, bro. Yeah. Kids are wild. But man, okay, so we've we've done the party queue. We're drinking. What was the name of this coffee again? The, this is. I went got. The I went funny got farm. a refill. This the is the funny, funny farm. farm. This is the Guatemalan blend. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So I will say this. Okay, so. We drank this coffee last episode. I'm drinking again. I'm not. I'm drinking the LaCroix mango. This stuff is... Oh, you you going to have LaCroix burps this episode. Mm. I will say this. This coffee is thick. Like three C's full thick. Full body. Like it is full body. Like, like literally. Like I, 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 Mark, Mark, you don't know how to spell thick if you've spelled it with three C's. You spell it with three, th- three C's. <laughs> how, how, thick, how thick be it? You saw how many C's. Got one C, you got two C's, you Again. got three C's, you got Lizzo's. Again, C's. you should have learned the language the last episode. <laughs> I really hope someone just picked up what I put down when I made my Lizzo joke, but we'll see if anybody does. Nobody but cares. either way, like I, I refilled this and I'm like, man, this stuff is just I don't know if you made it extra thick, like if you if you if you did like a higher like well, bean me- to water ratio. I definitely didn't measure it out. I just kinda went, eh, Yeah, it feels like again. it feels like you trucker stopped this mug. <laughs> like it tastes really good, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this because it is just thick. Drink it. Like like <laughs> lately I've been getting into very bright coffees lately. Like not full body, like well, you light know, body. If you hurry up and drink all that, you'll be awake most of the night. You can go to Planet Fitness and work out. a twenty four hour, baby. <laughs> but am I really gonna do that? Probably not. No, heavens no. I'll watch Y five O instead. All right, while well, while you're drinking your coffee, I'll go ahead and read the this week's review. Go for it. So, oh, I know who this is. So Cameron McClure. Yeah, McClure. he interacts with us over on Facebook. He a lot. does. He does. He said thought provoking and eye opening. Real Talk Christian is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to, not only because Mark and Fuller's banter is entertaining, (laughs) but also because they always present facts and viewpoints that I haven't considered before. Every episode has me always listening intently. Keep it up, y'all. Y'all. Actually, Cameron, where are you from, bro? Because, like, unless... Uh, If you look back in our Evernotes... If you, uh, it actually uh, says somewhere where he's from. Well, uh, well. So, do you take look, notes of our listeners? Hey, look, he's from this place. I'm not going to mention it on the podcast, but he's from there, from Texas. I didn't, dude. You can't mention somebody's. <laughs> it's just a state, wow. dude. Texans are proud of their state. Wow. If we did not say he's a Texan, how do you know he'd he be wants, offended? How do you know he wants people to know where he lives? Because he's a Texan. Yeah, but now they can look up his name and where he's from, and they're proud of that fact. Wow. My daddy's I'm, so, Texas, I'm so sorry, Cameron. I didn't that. say it. Just remember that. So when the lawsuit comes, it's for Mark <laughs> Hyde. Mark with a C. We'll send it to legal Actually, zoom. It's, we'll send it to legal zoom. No! Timothy Mark Hyde. Yep. Yeah. The great, the ambiguous. I don't know. The, wonderful, <laughs> the wonderful, the wonderful, the wonderful Tim Parsons. Is that who you should send it to? That that's who you, Tim that's Parsons. Who you should send it to. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why you look at all my social media handles. It's at T Mark Hyde with a C. Yeah. T, T and then Mark with a Timothy. C. Timothy. Timothy Mark Hyde. Oh, I so love it. Well, dude, let's dive yes, into. But, hey, but before we get oh, Cameron, you said, you said anyway. 
Dang it. But anyway, Cameron, <laughs> reach out to us. We'll get you that mini swag back, homie. Uh, he's already on the list. Oh, well, hopefully you've already got it. You're, you're, you're By welcome. this point, I hope you got it. You're, you're welcome. All right, dude. So, <laughs> right, set up this conversation. Like, so, wait, like, seriously, this, like, this, this conversation actually came from, we we asked uh, a question in the Facebook Oh, is that group. where this one came from? Okay. And it was like, uh, hey, what episodes would you guys, you know, we did do this every once in a while because... Mark and I just we run out of content to think of. Well, and we want to and involve the people. Heck yeah, we don't, we want to talk about what you want to hear. Which about. I will say we've kind of left Instagram community to come to the Facebook group community. Well, a little I, bit. We still hit up a little bit, but oh, anyways. we do. But anywho, so the question came of what would Christ and his ministry look like in like modern day culture? I'm like, that's oh, that's a right, because really it was question. like, would, would Jesus be? Would Jesus do TikToks? Like yeah, that was part of the yeah, question. TikTok and, and <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, so I was like, oh, that's a really good question. That's some good content to talk about. So we're gonna would go Jesus, ahead and would Jesus drop it like it's hot? That's what we're, we're gonna, gonna go ahead me. and talk about that today. And I'm gonna quickly lay out a couple things. Right, lay out okay. the, the groundwork. And then from there, it'll be a conversation. We can build it from there. Okay, so so let's do it. So uh, the first question I would ask is, uh, what were the attributes of Jesus 2,000 years ago, right? Because you can't know, until you understand who Jesus is and his attributes, how could you know what he'd be like in his ministry in this culture? Today? Oh, that's fair. That's fair. That's so fair. his attributes, uh, and these are only some of the ones I thought of off the top of my head. These are not all of his attributes. So don't be like, well, you forgot this one, or what about this one? This is just a snapshot. 30,000 foot view. Uh, loving, compassionate. He was a servant, gentle, speaker of truth, forgiving, prayerful, and humble. So what do those attributes look like when we actually mention those? So loving, uh, I would say John 15, 9 through 17 says, as the Father has loved me, I also have loved I also loved you, remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. And that's really when I want to focus on verse 13 there because Christ laid his life down, not just for his friends, but for all of us. Um, I mean, he paid the debt that we And now we I pay. am a friend of God. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know I'm that song? a friend there of it God. Is. I'm like, I might be going to try. Yeah. So uh, you are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore because a servant doesn't know what his master is doing. I've called you friends because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit and that your fruit should remain. So whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you. Love one another. So the next attribute, he was compassionate, right? Uh, Matthew 14, 14 says, uh, when he went ashore, he saw a large crowd and had compassion on them and healed their sick. So this is during his ministry. Yeah. This happened a lot. It always talked about he had compassion on these people. He had compassion on these people. He felt sorry for them, and so he went and healed them. He well, fed like, them. Like he I think, ministered to yeah, them. like Jerusalem, like he wept over the city. All the time. So this is just like a quick snap. Matthew is f- is filled with times where it says, and he had compassion on them. And Real men don't cry, but Jesus did. So what does that have to say? Exactly. Ooh. So uh, Jesus was a servant. Matthew 20, 24 through 28. When the 10 disciples heard this, they became uh, indigenous with the two brothers. Jesus called them over and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and those in high position act as tyrants over them. Uh, it must not be like the, that among you. They're, they're talking about uh, who's going to be the greatest, basically. Uh, on the contrary, whoever wants to become great among you must be, be your servant. And whoever wants to be the first, uh, among you must be your slave. Just as a son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So again, Christ, we always hear of Christ, the suffering servant, right? Mm -hmm. That's a big, big suffering servant came out of Isaiah, the prophecy from Isaiah, right? Isaiah, which Three, that was the prophecy that Jesus read in the temple, yes. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Jesus was also gentle. Matthew 21, 1 through 5, he says, When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples telling them, Go into the village ahead of you at once. You will find a donkey tied there with, uh, with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you, uh, says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place so that uh, what was spoken through the prophet, which was Isaiah, might be fulfilled. Tell daughter Zion, see your king is coming to you gentle 
and mounted on a donkey and a colt, the full of a donkey, Mm -hmm. which King Jimmy says something different. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't ready for that one. A little humor, right? But up. All right. So Jesus was also the speaker of truth. Like I said, I'm, I'm kind of going through this. This is just the groundwork. We're mm-hmm. just laying the groundwork. Uh, so don't doze off on me, especially if you're driving in the car. John 1, 14 through 18. Uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was a speaker of truth. The uh, word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observe his glory, the glory as the one and the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him and exclaimed, this was the one whom I said, the one who, who uh, the one coming after me ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. Indeed, we have received grace upon grace from, from his fullness. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the, the one and only son who is, oh wait, no one has ever seen God, the one and only son who is himself God and is the father's, at the father's side. He has revealed him. Man, tongue twisted. Uh, so Jesus was forgiving, Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Then Peter approached him and asked, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times. And Jesus replied, I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus replied, but as 70 times seven, Jesus preached forgiveness, right? He came and forgave us of our sins, paid that penalty. He was very forgiving. Uh, Jesus was very prayerful. The the well, gospel. Even are, going back to forgiving, you see Jesus with the woman who was caught in adultery. Oh you yeah. See, um, Jesus with the lowly, the outcast, the leper, right. the leopard, the the person struck with leprosy. Like you see those people. Right. Like Jesus went to them. Sure. To forgive their sins. The man right. who was well, blind he, from birth, lame. Right. Well, the yeah, the lame guy who they forgive lowered. your sins. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, I could heal you, but I could forgive you of your sins. Go and sin no more. You know. Right. That's what exactly. Sent the Pharisees in an uproar. Yeah. Um. Uh, Jesus was also prayerful throughout the Gospels. We see Jesus praying all the time. Um, he would go and seclude himself. He'd, you know, when they were crossing the Sea of Galilee, what was it? Twice it was recorded. They were they were on the sea crossing over, and Jesus went before and and was praying. He walked out on the water. I mean, there's just there's tons of instances where Christ was praying. Went off to pray. Yeah, like the, yeah, it went off to pray. Yeah, he went off to pray. He. He taught the disciples how to pray, but this one, as Luke 5, 15 and 16 says, but the news about him spread even more. This is one of those times where he's going to go off to pray. Uh, and large crowds would come together to hear him and be healed of their sickness, and he often withdrew to the, uh, deserted places and prayed. Um, often. That's why he often did that. Um, and then Christ was humbled, uh, or humble. Uh, Matthew 18, 4, Therefore, whoever humbles himself like, a ch- uh, like this child... This one is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So obviously, Christ preaching this, he is yeah. And, and doing flipping this. in twos, he even talked about that. You know, have the same have the same mind as Christ Jesus, who you know humbled himself, took on the form of a man. Right. Yep. So yeah. So that's the groundwork, right? So those are some of the attributes, and we can constantly go back and look at those attributes. And like I said, they're not all the attributes; just a quick snapshot of some of the attributes. But well, let's use those as our as our baseline. Yeah, right? because that's they're asking the question of what would Jesus do in today's culture, and what would it look like for Jesus to live in today's culture? You know, if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that's what made Jesus who Jesus was right. at his core. Back in the right. day, you know what? That would be his core today. Well, based off his teaching, that's who he was, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. So that's the baseline of what we can now move forward in the actual conversation. Um, so, yeah, would Mark, what would his attributes look like in today's culture? Like, what would it? I mean, obviously, I think it'd be the same. I mean, you see Jesus having a lot of compassion. Right. You see Jesus having a lot of sympathy. You see Jesus showing a lot of love and grace, but then you also see Jesus going ham on the people who need to go ham. Sure. Now, I think the one thing that's a little different that we need to understand is Jesus stepped into a culture that was like, like the, the the Israeli culture, which all followed Yahweh, but then there was preventative measures to keep people who are on the outside on the outside and those on the inside on the inside. Mm. And so part of me wonders, okay, back in that culture – it was Israel. They were trying to follow Yahweh. So Jesus went to the people who were un- considered unclean to appear before the temple to worship God. And rather than having to go to the temple, Jesus said, I'm just going to go to you. But so I don't know if, if that completely we, correlates into today's culture, though. So don't we kind of do that today in some aspects? I think Christianity we do. as a whole. 
as a whole, I would say, yeah, there there are roadblocks that we put in people's like like because the cross is supposed to be foolishness to the Greek and a stumbling so, block to the Jew, but it's supposed to be the cross that's a stumbling block. So they went to the synagogue, right? You had to find God in the synagogue, and Christ like, no, I'm going to come to you. Yeah, don't we do that? Of well, you got to come find Christ in the church. I do struggle with that. Like when <laughs> you know I hear what I mean? like like when I hear pastors talking about like oh a good like invite a friend how to how to invite follow Jesus friend. just come to church it's yeah. like. Well, the church was the gathering of the saints to go out and do the work of the ministry. Well, it's the gathering of the saints for what? For the growing edification. Of growing the edification, right. That's why we gather as a church. And then church. we go, we reach out. But it doesn't say, oh, bring all your lost friends to the church, because that's not what the church is for. We've had this conversation. Right. Um, so I think that we kind of paint ourselves in the same corner somewhat, right? But then I also think of like um, like a fundy, right? Uh, sorry, you can't. You don't. You're not wearing a suit and tie. We had this conversation too. You're not wearing yep. a suit and tie. You can't. You're not. You don't belong. You can't here. walk into this building. Yeah. yeah. So, but you gotta dress your best for Jesus, which is something they. You know, you had to dress a certain way. You had to wear a certain thing to go to the temple, right? To 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 be meet God, and you had to have. And we do this still, right? How many times have have we talked about? Well, you know, I want the pastor to pray for me. But are you praying for yourself? Like, like you have right. a direct relation. So there, there's, I'm not saying all Christianity, right? I'm just saying there's correlations that I could still see some of that culture, even in today's culture. And and sometimes I think we get a little. I'm, I'm trying to say this the, the the correct way. I think a lot of times we've put the American dream for comfort and for freedom and for. We just want to worship in freedom, and you you stay over there, and we do what we want to do rather than us going and impacting culture. Mm. And the terms of, like, when, when you see Jesus, what did Jesus do in the culture? He went to the lowly. He went to the sick. He went to the lost. He went to those that were trying to find their way to Yahweh but were being prevented in doing such. And I, a lot of times I think people go a little too far and say, oh, well, Jesus goes after these people. Well, it's like, okay, did Jesus go after those people, or did he go after people that were trying to already get to Yahweh? Just And just see, I think that, doing it. that Christ went out and proclaimed the kingdom. Right. Right. That the kingdom of God is here. That He pro- he proclaimed the kingdom wherever he went. It wasn't specific people he was, I mean, yes, he found, he knew, obviously he's God, right? So he knew he was going to meet specific people more than likely. Right, 100%. And so. Well, yeah, but, you think of the blind man who sent him or his parents. You said none, none, but just so that the son of man. Be but glorified. what was his command to the disciples to go out and to proclaim to all nations, right? Not to certain select yeah, people. Not, the gospel to all Not creatures. to find certain groups or certain. And I think that, that we also have that problem too, where we're like, oh, I need to go and. I need to only, I'm only going to preach and protest at the abortion clinic, or I'm only going to preach and protest at the gay pride parade, or I'm only going to, rather than no, we should be preaching and proclaiming the kingdom throughout our daily lives. And every person we meet, we may not always say it, but our lives should show it, right? That ambassador, right? We don't just pick and choose the groups that we do that to. We, we live that, we live that ambassadorship. And I, I get that, that, you know, one of the questions that, you know, we could be thinking of is like, okay, well, if the if Jesus showed up now in the in the modern culture, would the church even recognize him? Mm. You know, we asked that question with the Pharisees, right. and you know, like because we we look at the Pharisees and they're like, oh, this guy comes, he shows up, he's doing miracles, he's doing all this messianic stuff, and he's proclaiming all the things, and the, and the Pharisees trying to shove him down and keep him quiet and all these different things. But a lot of times, I feel like sometimes we throw the Pharisees under the bus too fast. But oh, we'd never be like them Pharisees, and we are exactly like that. Because I mean, let's think about it though. Let's say we're 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 living our religion, right? Sure. And yep. then all of a sudden, Joe Schmo shows up, and he goes, hey, hey, "Think of like Mormonism, right? right?" And all of a sudden, it's like, "No, no, I have this message from God." X, Y, and Z, all these different things, and people start following him, and we're like, no, 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 this is the truth, this is the truth, we're trying to pull people back into our faith and our religion. Right. I think that there's a level of. Would and this is where I want to make sure I try to stay humble. Is would I be like the Pharisee, or would I be like the person who's just trying to seek after God? And this is the Messiah that's well, finally showed up. The the problem was right. So we got to look at the Pharisees, okay. right? And 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 what was actually going on? They knew. They knew who he was based upon scripture and prophecy, right? They knew Jesus was the Christ. But they tried to shove it down. And they tried to dispel it because it took away from their power, right? So they weren't just truly seeking out truth. Mm -hmm. They wanted to maintain power. And that's where, okay, now now they fell for that reason. So I think if somebody's just humbly seeking, right, you have to be aware of false prophets, false messiahs. We're warned of these things. 
Um, this is why we should say in a tight knit group of, of faithful followers and always rely upon scripture for truth mm-hmm. rather than just the, the good sayings of a soothsayer. Um, but this is where I think that that difference is right. So I I've been led astray, right? I, I've believed stuff that, you know, somebody taught me that wasn't actually scriptural. Right. And I'll thank God. God showed me that that was wrong. <laughs> and I've repented of that. And I'm not saying I have everything right now, uh, but there's still a seeking towards God. And I don't, I wouldn't put myself in the same boat as the Pharisee. Now, yes, you could easily, right. This is where Galatians six comes in where it talks about when you're dealing with a brother, right. Do it in gentleness and love that you may not fall into the same temptation yourself. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful of that, right. Because we could just as easily become puffed up with our pride and power and, I mean, even real talk, we talk about this all the time, how we could get puffed up by the, the stats and the numbers and this or that. And, and, and we're, you know, we're at a mu- we're, we were invited to a major music festival. Yeah, and it's invited. A, it's exciting. It's exciting, it's very but exciting. it's also we got to try to keep it humble. But we like got to be humble, humble about, about it, it, right? And we got to constantly say, no, it's all God. It's all God. And we're along for the ride. And that's where you'll hear me say that a lot, especially on this podcast. And it's not just trying to stay humble, but it's also reminding myself, no, this we need to stay humble, right? Because if we don't humble ourselves somebody's going to humble us. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, but I also think part of this question is like, okay, would, would the modern church be accepting of Jesus? And one token, I feel like, like what you said, you know, are we emulating Jesus? But I also right. feel like this is also a bit of an unfair question to ask because we are trying to follow Jesus. But I think the real question is the fact of, so would Jesus look at us, which one day we believe he will, will he look at us and say, you did good. So, Talk about modern church, right? Okay, okay. modern church. The, the sweeping progressive Christianity. Okay, well, I think there's a, I think there's three different aspects of the modern church. There's progressive Christianity. There's, um, I would say, conservative evangelicalism, where it's the way that we're used to doing church. I would even put, like, Eastern Orthodox and Catholicism in a different category. Uh, that's, more liturg- that's more liturgical. And then, yeah, you could throw funnies into there, too. So I would agree, but I'm so looking, there's different facets. I'm looking at... Uh, both sides you got you got through progressive christianity right you got your fundies right mm-hmm. there's two there's two sides to this big massive quote right and, with and this there's question there's right? the love and acceptance side and then there's the wrath and would and holiness side. would a fundamentalist accept a john the baptist a jesus who slept outside who uh didn't wear their sunday best would a fundy Accept them, right? This is, you know, a, a real impactful song. Todd Agnew had a song called My Jesus back probably like 10, 15 years ago. Man, I heard Todd Agnew in a while. Yeah, so it was, as, you know, would my Jesus be accepted at my church? Was blood, uh, blood and dirt on his feet stained the carpets, you know? And it, it was true. It was speaking out against the fundamentalist side of things of we, we care more about the building. We care more about the dress. We care about how you present yourself in that fundamentalist spot. So then we go to the other side, progressive, right? Would the progressive modern church be accepting of Jesus? When Jesus says you snakes and vipers, right? Because they're all about the love and the compassion and forgiveness of Jesus. But they have to remember that he he spoke truth, that he's a just God, right? And so there's that other side of that coin where uh, it's not all about peace, love, and happiness, mm-hmm. right? That's not that's not who Jesus was either, because he chased the money changers out of the temple. Would he chase the people living in sin out of the temple, knowingly, right? Because that's what the Pharisees were doing. They were knowingly living in sin, and and holding these extra rules and power over people. And, and Christ spoke out against them. Right? But would, would Christ speak out against these pastors that are leading these people saying, you're okay? Well, the thing of Jesus, like you would travel over land and sea to make a convert, but then you made them, well, what, is, what does that verse say? You travel land and sea to make one convert, but you make them more fit for hell than you? Was that the verse? We, we, we talked about that a little bit ago. I remember what that was. Yeah, I don't remember. But so, uh, but that's my thing, you know, like, it's hard to say, you know, the, 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 I would, I would consider us compared to if you could, if you're putting us in three categories, right? There's, I'm going to call it, I'm going to go. call Before it. I forget the verse was Matthew 23, 15, where it says, what do you teach us of the law and the Pharisees? You hypocrites, you travel over land and sea to win yeah. a single convert. But when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. Mm. Yeah. 
So the, ouch. You know, if we're if we're sticking to three three categories of Christians, right? You're fundy, you're you're evangelical Christian, and you're I'll call them it, I'll, it, I'll call the evangelical moderate, right? Okay, yeah. So we'll go fundy, moderate, progressive. Okay. So. You know, moderate kind of sways. It can sway back and forth. We, we could be a little bit more progressive. We could be a little bit more fundy, depending on your upbringing and stuff like that. You, like you, I would say, you and I are pretty pretty middle. You maybe tend to lean maybe a little bit more progressive, and mm-hmm. I lean a little bit more fundy. No, I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah. And, and not that we're like pff, way over on those sides, but we're, we're pretty much middle, but we're kind of like this. No, right? I'd agree. I'd agree. And so... Uh, and I think that's healthy, and I think that's why that we that's have where the good, conversations come up. Right. We're not trying to be right. a silo, right? Exactly. Um, but I, I have, I, I think, I would like to believe that the moderate Christian would be accepting of Jesus and be be like the disciples of really just seeking truth. But I worry about some of the progressive Christians and the fundamentalist Christians. Uh, mm. Would they? I, I, that's a good question. I, I think that. It's a very fair question if we really self-examine motives. And when it comes down to the motive of yourself, right? I don't want to put people in categories as much as we have, but we have. Right. But if we don't self-examine ourselves, and what are our motives for wanting to follow Christ? Well, I think we could go one of two ways, right? If it's selfish motive and I just want to check off the boxes like we talk about, then no, I, I don't think we'd be accepting of the real Jesus. Right, and and even with that, on, on the progressive side, you know, yes, I do think that we need to be kind and love our neighbor, even if they are our enemy. Yes, yes. And even if someone is, goes, and they live a completely different lifestyle sure. than we think is what's true, we still do need to love and respect them because they are made in God's image. Yes. But we also see Jesus calling out sin for what it was. Right but loving the person in, in the process. Like there's actually someone who, uh, we're, we're part of the Upwards program, right? Upward right. soccer program. There's a little kid who's actually, this is his second year in a row being on Elliot's team. And um, he has, like, like his his mom is, like, like she's a lesbian, has married her partner. And we're trying to love the snot out of this family. Sure. And she grew up in a Christian household. Her dad's a pastor. And, and I would say in a church that we would both, like a type of church that we would attend in a different area. And she grew up following Jesus and knows the truth. Now, she believes that, you know, being gay is scripturally and biblically okay. But, you know, for us, like, Beth and I are having, like, the struggle where it's like we need to love and honor and respect you. But at the same time, we need to stand firm in what we believe. And I think Beth does it. I mean, Beth has a lot more interactions with her than I do just because of being mobs and, you know, hanging on the soccer field and going to the playground afterwards sure. and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm busy coaching. But, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to love this person and go, yes, we disagree with you. We believe this is what the truth is. This is where we disagree with you. Right. And even Jesus was the same way where Jesus said, like, the person caught in adultery, it was go and sin no more. Like, mm-hmm. like you, you got to stop. Right. And then with, you know, when someone asked Jesus about the question about uh, but, but, marriage, Jesus even said, you know, I got, I never, like divorce was never, an, like, divorce was never a thing, but because of the hardness of your heart, this right. is what we set up. Right. And the fact of, you know, when man was first created, God created them male and female. So even Jesus talked about the family unit and the family dynamic. Well, and you have to be careful, right? Because yes, we're supposed to love, but we can't overlook sin, right? We can't say, okay, well, being gay is okay. Right. Because it's not. It goes against the, I mean, when God says it's an abomination unto the Lord, it, that's a really bad thing, okay? Right. And, 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 all, I will... and that's for all sin. That's not just for, you know, being gay. That's It's for pornography. It's for whatever, lying, stealing. I mean, kill. I mean, whatever. What Looking at Sin's lust. not okay. No, sin is sin, and it's not okay. And we should always be willing, if you call yourself a Christian, you have to be open that you got to be called out on your sin right. right and and this was the and i and i, I want to speak into this because most people don't speak into this a lot of people like i read a lot of articles about did is homosexuality approved in the bible because one of the main arguments is and i read this every time is jesus never said anything against it now it, it's hard to make an argument from silence in terms of well you know Jesus talked about the marriage. So this, since he left, it was silent about this, and therefore that's true. Now, Jesus did talk about Adam and Eve and the creation mandate, but now sure. I was talking about divorce and leaving your father and your mother. 
But some people are like, but but Jesus literally Jesus had an opportunity to speak out against homosexuality, but he never did. But we also forget to look at the culture. He's looking. He's, he was speaking to a Jewish culture that already believed that being gay was an abomination. Right. I, I don't want to say being gay, but the homosexual lifestyle, living in the lifestyle, well, is an abomination. So therefore, Jesus it was wouldn't understood, even, right? Jesus, it was understood. Jesus wouldn't even need to speak into it. It's almost like if someone looked at us and said, "Hey, Mark Fuller, you guys never talk about." murder in your show you guys never asked the question is murder okay because we're like because we all know our yeah. culture the baseline is it's not okay so right. why are we even wasting our breath on it right now we talk about is you know other aspects like is are these things murder right but there's certain parts of our aspects of our culture that we don't even need to speak into because everyone knows that like, it's true we don't have to have a whole episode on why rape is bad right it's bad well, the Bible never says exactly, you know, that it's bad. And it's like, well, it's kind of implied when Jesus goes to look on a woman to lust after her is committing adultery in your heart, which is a sin. It means it's bad, right? Right. If you're going to that aspect, it automatically assumes and that you are, are of the knowledge that this other stuff is bad. Right. And so why would you even... So that's the thing is he wouldn't need to speak into things that the Israelites already understood of that was God's law. Now you got the conversation of, well, we're not under the law. We're under grace. So then we're, we're actually part of a different covenant, but it wasn't at the time to the people who was speaking to. And that's again, like you just said, you have to read it for the, the, not just us, right? Cause we, we are a different culture, hundred percent, but who was the culture that this book on these books were written to and what did they already believe? Jesus, and that's, that's the thing is Jesus, whenever he was, now Jesus did interact some with Gentiles, but I would say 99.9% .9 of the people he was talking to were Jews. They were Hebrew Jews living in Galilee, in who Jerusalem. Was, who was the first ma major player to the Gentiles? First major player? Player, yeah, like the person that God had chosen to send out. Oh, Paul. Paul, right? The Apostle Paul. So not Peter, not John. No. And the Apostle was Paul was dealing Paul. with Gentiles. Peter mainly dealt, and James dealt with the church in Jerusalem. And if you really look at the culture that Paul is speaking to, he speaks to those things, right? He speaks to the, uh, it's not good for a man to lie with a man. He's dealing with these issues throughout these churches where they're having these issues because they're Gentiles and they don't know any better. Right. And so that's where you see in Paul's letter, Paul's and, dealing and with these things. And people want to use the argument of, oh, well, Paul didn't really know. like they're like, Because people say, like, well, the word homosexual wasn't even invented until later, which is true. But if you read Greek mythology, well, homosexuality has been around in the Greek culture I don't have way to, before the Romans. I don't have to use the word homosexuality when it says a man that lies with a man or a woman that lies with a woman, which is unnatural, right? Th those words right there, right, in Greek are pretty self-explanatory. Yes, they're not using the word homosexual, right? Mm -hmm. But again, up to about 70, 80 years ago, gay meant happy. I'm happy and gay. You know, it's not saying homo. I'm not happy and homosexual. It's saying I'm happy. That's what gay meant. So terms change all the time, right? But going back to the Greek and the culture and, and the way they described it, it shows a clear act of homosexuality, which was spoken against. It was an abomination according to the Old Testament, which is who Christ was dealing with, who he was speaking to. So it was already understood. I mean, there were cities destroyed because of it. Destroyed. So I, I think it was, uh, that's why Christ, like you said, didn't speak to yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, culture. you have a lot of other fun questions here, so I want to not just harp on these too much. But yeah. I like I this question. I think I want to lean into this. Is, uh, I know. What would Jesus say about the way we, quote, unquote, do church? Mm, yeah, so this one was, uh, you know, I was thinking about that of like, huh. Of like, how we so, do church. Like, do church, not like be the church, right? But I guess the question comes like, I hear all the time, oh, I'm going to church. Uh, hey, the church is the, got this function going on. This is this is the, what or, you know what the aspect of what church is, how it looks like, how we relate to church in modern culture. Mm -hmm. uh, would Jesus speak against it? And I would say probably a little bit. I would say probably a little bit. He no, I think there's different ways we do church because there's, you know, the more the high church, like the Catholics and Eastern Orthodox and liturgical. Then there's the low church and then there's the house church. And then there's I'm the, talking about across the board. If you, if you take everything and average it out, right? Okay. The way it's done, right? Most people have a building, right? Right. Excluding house churches because they're trying to get back. And that's to a it. modern phenomenon of when Christianity became legalized and was a lot of practice in the in the in the open sure square but it's it's the 
But I, I would I would I wouldn't say that just because of this building is bad because churches have always had a place to meet. Well, yes, and I'm not saying the building itself is bad. It's the importance we hold to the building, right? The way we do. Church. So how do we handle the synagogue though? Because you know the temple was gorgeous. The synagogue was supposed to be set up a certain way. And I know, like well, the more I've talked with Catholics, they say, well, if you look at the Catholic service, it actually matches the Jewish service. Where's Where's the synagogue at today? After Christ. Where's the temple? Oh, the, the curtain's been torn. Where, where's the temple? No more. And by not, my... not one stone left upon another. So I think that would be a bad thing. Well, look at the temple. Look at that. Yeah, well, God doesn't dwell there anymore. Right, right? because the, 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 the veil's been torn. Been torn. The, the temple has been destroyed, right? And yet the church still moves on. So the importance of the building is there's no, there's no reason for it. The reason why the temple was so important, the things that were laid out in the temple, was because that was a certain way that God had set Israel apart. Mm -hmm. But that curtain, that veil has been torn. It's not that way anymore, right? And now the Bible says we can go boldly before God. We don't right. need to have a priest go on behalf of us. We right. don't because Jesus is our great high priest. Sure. We don't need to have, you know, these sacrifices because Jesus was the sacrifice. Right. Yeah. He fulfilled all this. So when I said how do we do church, like the one thing that I feel like the church doesn't do that great of a job. And this is just me being honest, especially as a, as a paid church staff member, we like to pay the professionals to do the things. So that way the other people, so that way the congregants are the parishioners and they kind of just sit and are ministered to. Now I was reading about the, why the way the church was set up the way that it was. And the reason was, it was because not everyone was literate and it was a culture where you literally, everyone had to work together to do stuff to make just society work. Sure. And but, we're, we're a lazy culture. But let's look at the culture today. Okay. Right? We're talking about would Jesus speak against the way we do church in this day and age in this culture based upon his attributes, right? Going back to the attributes of loving, compassionate, servant, gentle. I don't think we're very well at these things as a church as a whole, right? Yes, there's pockets. There's certain congregations that are good at this, but are, are we loving as a church? Are we compassionate as a church? Are we serving as a church? Are we gentle as a church? Do we speak truth as a church? Do we forgive as a church? Do we pray well? Are we humble? I think as a church, corporate body, whole culture. That we've been struggling with that? I think we are too self-centered, and we don't we focus too much inward and not enough outward and actually doing these things. And I would right? say the American church. Um, because I feel like the American church is different than the Chinese church, different you than know, the Middle East church, but, different than the But South here's African the thing, church. right? So you you, you got to speak to the culture you're in. Right. Right? Then we're talking about like the Western culture right So now. I'm speaking to this because I am not involved. I can read about the Chinese, <laughs> the Chinese church. Well, we're, or, not, we're not. But I'm not a part of that culture. I don't understand that culture. And so I can't speak to that culture. I, I can speak to the Western American church. Mm -hmm. That's what I can speak to. And so that's what I'm speaking to of. As a Western American church, if we stood for truth, we wouldn't have the problems we have in society. If we were more loving, if we were more compassionate, if we served well, if we were more gentle, if we were more forgiving, if we prayed more, if we were more humble, we wouldn't have the issues that we have in this society. That's the thing. We have these, we have highest abortion rates, highest divorce rates, even in the church, pornography struggles with among church leaders. We have, uh, 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 Affairs and stuff going on within the church. Mm. We have a look at the look at. Uh, I think the Hillsong documentary with all look, the look money at, and yeah, power. Hillsong, Mars Hill. Look at Rave Zacharias. I mean, all these scandal, 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 scandal. This is in the Western culture church, right? And if we did the attributes of Christ, it'd be a whole different. It'd ball be game. a whole different ball game. But we don't, and so I think that yes, Christ would speak out and say. You say you love me, right? We go back to if you really love me, you'll do as I command. And we are not doing as a church as a whole the command of Christ. Right? Hmm. Let me go back and find it. Um, I'm trying to remember where it was at. Loving. Uh, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You know, and it, and it goes through. So that was uh, John 15, 9 through 17. And I won't read it because it's a long passage. But... I guess that's where I stand on it. And, and, and I get a lot of it's my opinion, but based upon what I see, right? And the power when, when a nation, you know, what did God say uh, it, to the Israels? When you humble yourself and pray. And see uh, my face, I'll heal your land. Yes. And, and I think that God does that. He gives good gifts to his children, right? And if his children are doing what they're supposed to be doing, that's going to happen, right? Uh 
I, I think that, yes, that was spoken for Israel, but I think that could possibly be something that happened in, in Western culture if the church stood up and did what it was supposed to do. But instead, we cower away. We cower away from speaking truth. We cower away from serving. We cower away, I mean, especially men in the church this this day and age. And we hear about it all the time, about, you know, women are becoming leaders. And if you ask women, why why do you feel like you have to be the leader? Well, because my husband's not leading it out. He's not being the spiritual leader of my home. So I feel like I have to pick up the ball. That's what's being told in the church. That's what church women are saying about church men. That's not even what the world's saying about us. But if you look at the world, right? So we got uh, the gay and lesbian march going on. You got church people sitting outside saying, you're going to hell, burn, burn, burn. Like These are the signs that they're holding up, right? So they're speaking truth, and they're speaking truth in love, right? So yes, if they don't repent of their sin, we know what's going to happen, eternal damnation. But do you constantly just sit there and use that as a slam on them? No, that's not gentleness and love. No, people won't listen to that. Right. So I, I don't think as a church as a whole. Now, again, it's a blanket statement, right? The church, the way we do church, Western American Christian Christianity, the way we do church, I don't think we do it correctly as a whole. Hmm. Now, there are pockets, right? There are churches, there are congregations, there are people that do it correctly. I think, honestly, there's a lot of churches that do this well. It's more the fact that we just don't hear about them because they're doing it well. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot of little churches that are just loving the best they can out of their community. Sure, but what does their community look like? South Bend, what does South Bend look like? So so we got a lot of little churches around here doing it right. right. But we have a lot of churches that don't. What does South Bend look like? Murder rates are up. Mm -hmm. Crime is up. Abortions are up. Divorce is up. So we're doing something wrong. We should be influencing, not being influenced. So that's and, I, just, and I agree, but at the same time, it, it's it's the hard battle of yes, culture and society will change as the people start to follow Jesus, but at the same time, we also know that the world hates Jesus too. Sure. So I think that there's only so much that a Christian could do. And if we are doing our job in, you know, loving others, which starts with loving your kids, loving those in your immediate little tiny circle, you know, things can happen, but there's a lot of things that we need to do. And we will have to see changed in order to do it. Who Christ was self self-sacrificing, right? Right. How many of us are self-sacrificing? Oh, we like comfort, homie. How many of us? How many of us don't want to put down the, the device to go out and reach people for Jesus? How many people don't want to stop watching TV? I'm raising my hand because this is me, right? How many people would rather have the comfort than doing what they're supposed to do? I, I'm I'm guilty. This isn't just speaking. When I talk about the church, I'm guilty of a lot of this stuff. I'm not living and doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a ambassador to the world, right? I should be out there. I should be out there loving the snot out of people. And I'm not because I'd rather be home because I'm an introvert. That's my excuse. Mm -hmm. I'm an introvert, so I really want to do that. I, I got to stay home and, and rest and relax and have some me time. I got to get me time. And, and that's not what Christ is telling us to do. He's saying, no, you've had enough of you time when you were living in the world. Now it's time for me time. Christ saying me time. You go out. You love the snot out of people. Because if you really love those people, you'd be scared to death of them that, that are scared to death for them that they're on their way to eternal damnation. And you'd be saying, hey, man, I love you, man. Let me show you a better way. So what would Jesus do you think actually would he be doing in this culture? You know I, what I mean? Well, I think he'd be proclaim, proclaiming the kingdom just like he what, – when did you see Christ going, oh, I'm going to – I mean, yeah, he had me time. But what was his me time? With the Father. With the Father. And then he did what? Went back out, right? And to the crowds. Yeah, and that's the Healing thing. It's like, I'm curious, though, because when we see Jesus' ministry, he didn't start till he was probably about 30 years old. So well, that's, what what is, that's what's recorded, public right? Ministry, right? So what did he do the first 30 years? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, what did he do? Because he wasn't out proclaiming the kingdom the first 30 years. Well, no, he had a forerunner doing it. Right, John the Baptist. Right, sure. right, right. But what was Jesus doing in the culture? Don't know. It wasn't... You know what I mean? It's one of those things you can't... Spe you could speculate, but should you speculate? Because... We don't really know. It wasn't recorded. I mean, he could have been doing it, but we don't know. It wasn't recorded. I, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. All I can do is based upon what was recorded and what was, I mean, because what did the apostles do? I mean, it doesn't give us every, everything that Andrew did, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. give us everything that Matthew did. Well, no, because that's not the point of the Bible. 
Right. So, but we have we have what we have, and we have to look at what we have, and what were they doing? Right. They weren't sitting on their hands. They were going out proclaiming the kingdom. That's what they were doing. They were loving the snot out of people. They were trying to help them. That's what it was about. So, in my opinion, not to stay on this too much longer, but uh, would Jesus speak away the, against the way we do church? Yeah, I think American Christianity is a very self centered, self focused church, and I think he would speak against it. I might even broach the subject of maybe he'd call snakes and vipers, at least some of us. Not, I'm not saying you or I. I'm just saying right. some of us but in I the church. But I think what we, we easily do is we point the finger like, oh, yeah, I bet you he caught him some snake and vipers. Well. But the question is, if we're called to internally reflect on, on ourselves, too, and go, what would Jesus say to me? And that's why we see in the Bible, like, you know, G- the Apostle Paul was, was running his race well. And he even sure. said, I am trying to run my race well. Follow, I- imitate me as I'm imitating Jesus. Sure. And that's the life we're supposed to be calling to live, too, is the sure. fact of, are we running our race in such a way that, yes, we are bringing honor to God. Now, we can't be so focused on our own race that we forget about everybody else, because that, that means you ain't running your race very well. But, but, but what is the mandate, right? What's the race? The race is... What's the commands? Love God and love others. So where is the self-focus in that command? The self focus is: Are you loving God, and are you so? Loving when he others? said, "When he says, run my race,' what do you th- what do you think that race is?" I would say it's to honor God with everything you do. I, th- I think it's being the ambassador, right? It's not. Well, I got to take care of me. I think it's no. I got to love God and love others. That's that's the race. And am I doing that well? So here's the question: Then, how would Jesus? interact with the things in our culture? You know, uh, like so the social getting media into, getting and then the, the movies questions. and. So we had these conversations, right? You and I, yeah, and, and we and we and try to navigate the best we can, right? We and I think we've landed pretty well of um, the Instagram, the Facebook, the Twitter, the TikTok. I have an opinion on that. Would Jesus use all those social media platforms? I think he would not, but I think the disciples would. I think. I don't think he would. I think he'd be too busy actually interacting with people. I was gonna say. I think if. if if it comes down to it, we think they're great tools, right? You right. and I, being disciples of Christ, right. think they're great tools to use. I think we'd be the ones holding up the camera, recording it, and do, going, doing the go-live things with for him, right? Right. Well, not even just that, but it's more the fact of, okay, so you see the Apostle Paul writing letters. You see Peter writing letters, right. which they are using modern technology to where, interact with their church. Where did Jesus write? He didn't write nothing. No, it, he was it, out doing. It was his ministry. disciples that were doing all right, the writing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I would agree with you on that. That now, should we use these platforms to glorify Jesus? Absolutely, Absolutely. and that's what we're trying to do right and, now. And we've had that conversation of of we think that they're great tools to have. But would Jesus be hitting the well on TikTok? Probably not. But the real important question of the day, the 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 the, the icing on top of the cake question Where would are you going with this would jesus eat chick-fil-a <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying like what do you eat chick-fil-a <laughs> that dude even eat it on sunday he he'd go he'd go old testament in the desert where he'd get two orders on chick-fil-a on saturday so we could have one saturday and one on sunday oh, that's the Lord's chicken that's the way to do that's it. that's the way he'd do it but he'd also part the line of cars too and walk right <laughs> up <laughs> but would jesus eat chick-fil-a i mean chicken was considered <sighs> clean right would you think that he'd get like a chick-fil-a sandwich and then like break it and multiply it and feed it to the 5,000. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be dope. Here's your Chick-fil-A special sauce. <laughs> and here's some, here's some Chick-fil-A mac and cheese. Oh, here's your waffle fries with your honey mustard to dip. Oh, but yeah. we know he, we know that he's still a Jew who practiced Judaism. Sure. But I guess technically after, I mean, he, after he left, that's when the sheet came down with all the animals, and and God told Peter, why are you calling unclean what I have called clean? But Jesus was a practicing kosher Jew. Sure, but that's not the culture he would be in today if he came today, right? Well, that's, that's true, that's true, that's true. I'm just throwing it out I there. I mean, all I'm saying is homeboy would probably be hanging out at Long John Silver's and Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Long John Silver's. But he couldn't eat no pork, so he couldn't eat no bacon, he junior might, bacon cheeseburger. He might go to McDonald's get a fish filet. <laughs> fish get, filet. Get, get that. I mean, technically, anyone can eat the... Um, uh, the McRib because it's not really even real. Well, so. I was gonna say, isn't most McDonald meat like just mystery meat anyway? It's so <laughs> stinking true. Would you just eat a chicken? So, <laughs> so the next question, right? I had to throw in a couple fun questions. Yeah, here. you was, did. What type of entertainment do you think Jesus would do? Like music, movies, <laughs> books, recreational activities, vacations, uh, etc. He would uh, play lead electric guitar in a punk pop band, and then he would watch The Chosen. <laughs> 
<laughs> he'd play in the chosen. He'd, what play, he'd be in the chosen. Like, I am the what chosen. What type of entertainment? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's a man. It's hard because it's a whole different culture. Because Jesus was just out living life with people. Yeah, that's why I. You know, I think you do whatever. I mean, they're fun questions, but I'm like, yeah. I don't even know how to answer this. Like, what, what would Jesus do? Now, again, we don't know what Jesus sure. said the first 30 years, but in the last three, he was out loving people. Well, yeah, and so, you know, probably he's probably meeting at the coffee house, you know, having a cup of coffee with people is what I'm guessing. He'd be but. hanging. I, I, I like how the Chosen did a lot of the artistic liberties where Jesus was playing with with his, like, with the kids. He was Making chill, toys, hanging out with the disciples. Because, yeah. you know, we, we only have a... Sn- a snapshot. Most of what we have in the Gospels isn't Jesus's early life. It was like the weeks leading up to the the, the crucifixion. Right, you know, right. a lot of Passion Week. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, these are fun questions to have, but I mean, the the real question. I guess I'll, I'll ask this question to kind of land the rocket ship because like, we're right? not landing the plane. we're not landing the plane. Hey. Okay. <laughs> hey, Facebook okay. group, we're landing the rocket ship today. Um, Little how should time. all of this impact the way? we as Christians live life today, right? After we've had this conversation of, of what would Jesus ministry look like? Would he be happy with us? Would he not be? How should all this conversation impact how we live today? I like the way Andy Stanley put it. He said, if Jesus truly rose from the dead and we truly followed him, we would be doing exactly what he told us to do. Mm. And so if Jesus really did rise from the dead, which means that he really is God, that he really is who he said he was, therefore we probably should listen to what he tells us to do. We probably should do what he tells us to do. And what is that? It's to love God and it's to love our neighbor as herself. And, and to, you know, and, and this is hard for me to say because I like my comfort. I don't like feeling, especially, it's funny, the older I get, the more I don't like feeling uncomfortable. Uh, me too. To be Amen. honest with you. Like hey, when I was a teenager, security. man, I was totally cool doing weird things. Dude, I moved to Florida with like two weeks notice. I just packed everything up and moved. Like, right. I was like, whatever. Then I think, now it's like, no way. And and the older I get, the more I have security. I mean, I, I, I ain't preaching to nobody but myself. The more I am secure in the fact of I have land that I own. I have a house that I own. Right. I have cars that I have. Food on the job. table. And then it, it is very easy to go through the mundane. Now, at the same time, I don't think Jesus calls us to stop living and no. for you to stop being sort. Which side note, do you think Jesus would be in the union? No, I already answered this. I don't think he would be. But he was a carpenter. He'd be in the carpenter's union, he, right? He would. He'd be a carpenter, but he'd be non-union. Uh, he'd be non- <laughs> He'd definitely be non-union. U- union for all the things they get right, they do twice as many things that they don't get right. <laughs> oh, goodness. So Jesus would have his own LLC doing his carpenter Probably. thing. Probably. Oh, yeah, he'd be self-employed. But, you know, but when if... <sighs> he'd be working for Menards. <laughs> <laughs> Save big money, yo. Get that Sorry, reboot. That's, that's bad. I love it. That's, that's kind of blasphemous. Sorry. But, you Sorry. know, but if we're supposed to live the way we're supposed to live as Christians, we're supposed to do everything to God's glory. Right. So I think we're still called to not just give up our jobs because, you know... Even in Paul in First Thessalonians, where it's like some of y'all quit your job, sold everything, or you're just sitting waiting for Jesus to come back. Yeah. He who don't work don't eat. So you right. have to take care of responsibility. Well, even Paul himself was a tent maker. Right, so. Yeah, and and Paul even said, you know, like I wish some of you guys were single as I would be. So therefore, you could put more focus on the kingdom instead of having to focus on worldly things. So that's just a fact. Like we're called to love our wives. We're called to, yes. or, or if you're a, a wife, called to love your husband, or, kids, or if or, you're kids, or. You right. know, and, and the world's broken and it's messed up and it's not the way that it should be. All Paul was saying, you have more time. That's right, all 100%. Saying. And, you know, we're supposed to love God and love others. And sometimes that means we're supposed to focus less on our comfort and more on going out and loving someone else. I think part of it also is the fact of we wouldn't look at anyone who's on the opposite side of any conversation as the enemy that needs to be won or right. we need to win the fight. But we're called to view that person as... No, 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 no. You, you're made in God's image, so therefore right. I need to honor, and respect you, even if you're my and enemy. Have calls a pray, have compassion, and pray for you, right? But still win the argument. But, but no, no, no. But you know, it, it is hard. But it's like, how should all of this impact how we live our lives as Christians? I think it's the fact of we're called to honor God with what we do, right? We need to understand that we were not called out of the world, but we're sent into the world as ambassadors, as ambassadors. So therefore having the gut reality checked of if someone would look at my life, you know, 
would they say, yeah, I, there's something different about him. That, oh, he follows Jesus? Okay, that makes sense. Right. And, you know, a lot of times we like to put on the Christian facade in the show. And and I, I try to be very intentional. I mean, I mean, look at me. I have, like, WWJD I wear every single day. I, had to wear it for, I couldn't wear it for a little bit because I, I developed a little rash, so I couldn't wear it anymore. Or poison ivy. I take it off when I get poison ivy. Like that. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but, like, I wear a WWJD bracelet. I have a explicit Christian tattoo. And, but you know, am I letting those be the only reasons why people know I'm a Christian or do people know I'm a Christian by the way I talk in the way I right. act in the way I serve? Right. Yeah. That's all I, I got. Well, and you got to be careful too. You know, you got those certain Christians that, oh yeah, man, I got like 18 WWJD bracelets. I wear all the time in my, my Jesus saves or Jesus is my homie shirt. And it's you like, say you have faith, are, but show me your faith by are your you, works. Are you idolizing your image? <laughs> At that point, you know, I had we had a question. Uh, uh, I can't remember if it was email or messenger or something like that. Maybe it was Instagram. Uh, can we even idolize our, our Christian tattoos? You know, and I was like, mm. that's a good question. Yeah, we could. Right. We can idolize anything. And we had that conversation of uh, idolatry in the church. Remember that conversation where we could even so much go to the point where we I make the cross itself, the symbol of, of Christ, an idol to us where we're worshiping the cross rather than the one who hung on the cross. I mean, th- there's we can make anything an idol. That, that's that's the problem with us. That's why God said you shall have no other gods before me because we're uh, creatures that like gods, obviously. We like to be God. We like to be God and make little images of God and, 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 make God and we have just to be like careful, us. right? So those things aren't necessarily a bad, you know, the Christian tattoo, the WWJD, this is not a slam on you at all. By the way, I don't want you to feel that way. But I'm I don't. So, I'm just, you know, those things aren't bad. No, no, no I know what you're saying you, though. Until you know, you got to be careful so you don't take them to the to the extreme to either. Because yeah, like I mean, obviously, since you're a Christian, you need to wear a WWD bracelet too because you have to because that's, that's what Christians do. That's what Christians do. That's when it gets bad. That's what faith can do. No, <laughs> but since we've landed the rocket ship, are there yeah. are any last thoughts to, to to make the rocket ship land back safely at home in port? Would Would Jesus? Well, I guess my, my, my final thought is would Jesus... I just Jesus, had a rocket ship land in port, didn't I? Yeah, you're yeah, like rockets I'm, I'm I'm combining metaphors, and, I'm sorry. Yeah, on the farm. <laughs> Anyways, uh, any, anywho, that's what I should say. Anywho. Said. Anywho. Uh, at the end of the day. <laughs> at the end of the night, you know. <laughs> I'm just switching up all the way around. Uh, <laughs> now I lost my train of thought. Oh, would Jesus? Uh, what what would Jesus look like in this culture? It, Jesus would look the same as he did two thousand years ago. It's how do we look, right? Mm. How do we stack up as a church? And that's where we need to f- self examine of where we're at. That's the only self focusing we should do is to see where we're at and see how we line up as being ambassadors and imitators of Christ. I like it. I like it. Well, should we should we land the plane on that conversation? Let's land the planet. All right. Time for. Fun <laughs> you know, sometimes when we land these planes and end these conversations, it's a little bit of a bumpy, a bumpy landing. It's like the end. We hit we hit the runway and we bounce a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Well, dude, we are well over a hundred something episodes in. We're over a hundred reviews on on hey, uh, an Apple Podcast, on but please leave us review over there on Apple Podcast, or if you're on Spotify, leave a rating. But in all these episodes. Episodes, you have not failed to give us a fun fact. So we have another one for So, my dude, what is today's fun fact to end the show? The fun fact of the day. Did you know that Europeans were scared of eating tomatoes when they were introduced? <laughs> Scholars think... Man, they're white people crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you. They're white people crazy. <laughs> Scholars think Herman Cortez brought the seeds in 1519 with the intent of the fruits being used ornamentally in gardens. Which is fair. Which is fair. Yeah. By the 1700s, aristocrats started eating tomatoes, but they were convinced the fruits were poisonous because people would die after eating them. In reality, the acidity from the tomatoes brought out the lead in the pewter <laughs> plates, and they actually died of lead poisoning. <laughs> Fun fact. So people <laughs> thought tomatoes were poisons, but in reality, it was the pewter plates. Wow. Yeah, the lead in the pewter plates. They were dying That's of crazy. lead poisoning. That's crazy. The the acidity from tomatoes. So that would mean, I mean, what else would do that? The uh, coffee. If you put coffee, coffee maybe, but like lemons, oranges. I don't know. That's hilarious. So so tomatoes, so, yeah. and we know today tomatoes are a good good thing for you. Because about to, with, but we, people it, always construe it, like there's always that big conversation of fruit or vegetable. 
It's a fruit. Veggie tails. It's a fruit. Yeah. Th- thanks. Bob. But think about it. I'm not a big tomato fan, but I will eat one on a BLT. I will eat one on a Chick Fil A. A little salt. Deluxe. I don't. <laughs> like I don't really eat them straight. I don't. Oh, I'm not a big fan of them straight. But think about it. No tomatoes. That means no ketchup. That means no salsa. That means yeah. no pizza because you gotta have that, yeah. that, that 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 tomato sauce. That also means no spaghetti and red red pasta sauce. Oh, yeah. Like think about it. If tomatoes were actually poisonous, our lives would be boring. Yep. And Jesus should just have already come back. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> I like salsa. I, I used to eat salsa oh, so every night, I. man. Oh, I love it. Oh, but uh, yeah, so uh, if you guys enjoyed Oh, that also means no hacienda, by the way. They don't know who hacienda is. But we so, do. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, go ahead. If you guys enjoyed this, uh, this podcast, go ahead and leave us a review if you wouldn't mind. Also, you can go over to YouTube and type in Real Talk Christian Podcast. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that little bell notification Ding. so you get the latest and greatest episodes. Uh, you can also reach out at uh, realtalkchristianpodcast.com. Phone number 574-400-5352. Email is uh, realtalkchristianpodcast at gmail.com. All the socials. We made everywhere. it pretty simple, my friend. So, uh, yeah. We made it pretty, pretty simple. But- and don't forget to join the Facebook group that's happening over there in Facebook land. We keep growing that every single day, having a lot of conversations because we say we want to keep the conversation going. And we do over there in Facebook and also on Instagram. And don't forget, we will be at the N- Getty Getty Music Festival. July 22nd, 23rd. In Southern Michigan at Lanitis. Yep. Lanitis, Michigan. July 23rd, 22 through 23. Learn more. Just hit our show notes. We'll have the link there in the show notes. But my dude, anything else before we let these beautiful people go? No, sir. I love it. Well, again, thanks for joining out. <laughs> joining out. Joining us in RTC. But until next time, take it easy. Oh man, we 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 had a hard time ending that episode right on time, didn't we? We did we did. But we're still talking.